Hello, this is Justin from Arcdyne Security, here to give you a quick tutorial on how to set up and configure our Arcdyne uh, IP camera events driver. So you can see here, this is the camera that we'll be testing uh, and setting up today. I've assigned an IP address to it of 192.168.1.109. And before we get into the actual control four side of things, we're gonna jump into the web interface of that camera and do some quick configuration. So first step, you'll want to make sure that your camera is named. This name is gonna be pulled into the Control 4 driver. Uh, so it's just handy to do it here so you don't have to do it later. Under System, System Settings, Device Name, just type in whatever name you'd like to give that camera. The next step, we'll want to set the authentication method. This is found under System Security Authentication, and you'll want to make sure that these dropdowns are both set to digest slash basic. The third step is optional, but if you would like to use the third stream of the camera, you'll have to go under System Maintenance System Service and check Enable Third Stream. It will ask you to reboot the camera or force you to reboot the camera uh, once you hit Save, so keep that in mind. Once the camera reboots and comes back up, you'll want to configure whatever event that you want to pull into the Control 4 project. In this case, we're going to be using intrusion detection. As you can see, I have it checked uh, and enabled here. I have a field drawn uh, indicated by this yellow box here, and I have a minimum and a maximum set. Those are optional, but they help to weed out um, false triggers and stuff like that. You can also set this threshold seconds to one which helps you know if a fly or something like that flies in front of the the camera really quickly it won't trigger that it'll only trigger something that is within that field for a full second for testing purposes i'm just going to leave it at zero so once all those things are configured we can jump over to the control four side and add our driver once you have it installed in your drivers folder just search for arcdyne and we're going to use this Arcdyne IPC events driver and add it to our project. We'll jump over into connections, network, find it in the list here and give it the IP address. Then back into system design and tell it the password. Once that's completed, you'll see that the camera driver will validate and connect to the camera. And you'll see these properties here fill in. You can see that it pulled in the name that we set earlier over in the web interface of the camera. And you have other firmware uh, information and a list of detections here as to what kind of events that the camera is capable of sending to the Control 4 controller. If you head over to the connections menu, and select the camera, you'll see the control outputs listed here for each one of those events. In order to capture these events, we'll have to add some type of sensor. In this case, I'll use a simple generic motion sensor driver. Add that to my project. We'll call it patio intrusion. Head back to the connections menu and you'll see that you can now connect, in our case, field detection to the contact sensor of that generic motion driver. Once that's all connected, you're ready to start programming. So we'll head over to that menu. First step is we'll select the patio intrusion um, driver here and we can set a rule for when that patio intrusion senses motion, or in, in our case, intrusion detection. On the right hand side, we're going to tie it to this simple uh, wireless outlet switch that's connected uh, to a simple light. So we'll go ahead and whenever that triggers, turn on the light. And whenever the intrusion stops sensing, we will turn off the light. 
if you're using our Arcdyne NVR driver that allows for control of the HDMI interface, you can automate that interface as well. So we'll go to when the patio intrusion senses motion and select Arcdyne NVR V4 remote. First, we'll hit number nine on the keypad, which will cause that particular camera to go full screen. Then we'll delay for say 10 seconds. Then to return to the same grid that I currently have up on the screen, which is a four by four grid, we'll hit the info button in sequence uh, five times. You will have to put a one second delay in between each one of those button presses uh, or else it sends them all at once and doesn't quite uh, get them all in there. So we'll select the info button. We'll put five info button presses in. And then in between those, we'll do a delay of one second. All right, and we'll go ahead and go test that and show you what it looks like. And as you can see, the light turns on, the interface changes to that camera full screen, and then after 10 seconds, the interface returns to the 4x4 grid. So that just about does it for the tutorial. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to us either by starting a chat on our website at arcdyne.com or give us a call at 855-272-6682 and we'll be happy to help. Thanks.